Alright, for my army, I have Balder, I have Wilder, I have Megalith, I have two Guardians, then I also have two Watchers, I have two units uh, of the Druid Stone Wards, um, I feel like they're a nice choice, they're good against anti-infantry. I have two units of Shifting Stones, one with UA, then I have one Sentry Stone. Alright, I'm playing a pretty standard 50 point uh, tier 4 runes of war list. Features uh, Molg, the Mauler, Axer, uh, and Earthborn for your heavy hitters. Uh, four units of uh, rune shapers only costing three points apiece. Um, you really have to have some answers for them when you're uh, playing against them. Uh, your deployment zone is extended two inches forward and I get to put a couple of walls uh, in play which you'll see pretty important in this scenario. Setting up, the first thing I'm doing is I'm putting my walls out, uh, or I will be in a second. <laughs> Alright, one of the benefits of this tier force is being able to put a couple of walls in play. Um, 20 inches up from the back of the table. One of the caveats is they cannot be within 3 inches of another uh, object, so we have a little bit of adjustment here. Um, the idea is I'm going to set my two groups of rune shapers so I run up behind those walls for cover. Um, I know he's playing a list that's got a real high armor and, and tough to crack but he's taken a couple of those uh, shrimp units to put up on the sides I want to make sure I get behind my wall so I don't get my rune shipper shot off the table um, one of the things that uh, I've seen when I've played against Balder in the past is the crazy assassination vectors he can get so I kind of like the fact that I've got a little wall on the back here and an objective that I'm going to try to hide my caster behind I'm putting all my heavy beasts in the middle of the table um, Janasia is going to throw a wall up hopefully when I get going and it's going to allow me to move up basically undercover and the idea is I should be able to get the alpha on his army um, I figure that's pretty important another benefit of this playing this tier is that the creel stone is going to start with five fury on it so I don't have to load that up um, and it's his deployment Circle deployment. It's very short and very sweet um, because basically everything in my army, or over half my army, advanced deploys. Um, all my war beasts get advanced deploy. Uh, the two watchers have it normally. The two guardians and megalith get it because I have two inches shifting stones and a unit of sentry stones. And obviously my opponent doesn't have any advanced deploy, so I just go ahead and set up everything. And I kind of um, screw up a little bit um, I think because I should have probably put the stones out farther because I can deploy them up to 20 inches because of my tier um, but other than that I feel very confident on where everything was placed although I did forget my advanced move which kind of sucks Alright, so on my turn one, there's a lot of playful banter going on at this point because there's grilling going on and hamburgers and hot dogs and pretty much whoever loses this game has to go fetch the food for the other person. So this is very high stakes action going on. I'm running my rune shapers up behind the walls um, and stacking them too deep. Uh, the idea is next turn the front unit will advance and, and throw rock hammers and the group behind will advance up to the walls. Janasia's come up, she's throwing down her wall, and the beasts are now going to run to the spots up behind, getting cover, and using Earthborn's Animus. Um, one thing I tell you, the, the, the biggest challenge I've found to play in this list so far is maneuvering uh, Moog's Club. That dang thing gets in the way of everything. It bangs into models, bangs into walls, bangs into everything. So once I figure you get Molg's club down, you can pretty much be a good troll player. Um, Doom Shaper is going right now. I'm putting a Banishing Ward on, on a one set of Rune Shapers. And I'm putting a Fortune on another. Make sure I can reroll my missed attacks because, you know, that happens. Um, and finally, the Creel Stone is going to come up and they're going to... Uh, chant for armor and one of the things I'm finding I, I'm a war machine player I play men off mostly 
one of the things I'm finding with the Fury is, you know, it, it's it really is a different way to plan your turns, and having to think about, you know, when you're going to put your Fury out and how much Fury you need, uh, it presents a little bit of a problem because I I tell you, or activation is, is one of the biggest changes I've found because, you know, with War Machine armies, you've got to plan your entire turn beforehand. Um, I'm fine with the, with the Horrors army with Trollbuds. I can kind of make it up a little bit. Circle turn one. All right, so for the first second, I kind of like think about how everything's going. Um, then I end up moving up a Watcher and put up Stone Skin. So basically, you can take the little rock throws that uh, the Rune Shapers can throw at him. Um, I double check cards because I kind of have a brain fart in how far these guys can move. They're really slow. Um, and I'm just shifting up the Guardian a little bit, which is shimming him up a bit just so he's in a better position. I think I probably should have moved him up a little bit farther, but uh, I, I was trying to play more defense and offense, and I think it kind of bit me in the ass in the end. Uh, Megalith, he kind of shimmies forward. I'm also kind of debating on what I want to do with him. Um, I go ahead and cast, uh, do Geomancy of Earth Spikes. Uh, if you don't don't know what geomancy is, um, both wardens and megalith can for, be forced for one fury point to cast one of the caster spells that costs three or less. Inner spikes is a AOE pow thirteen. Obviously, I wasn't in range. Deviated, hit some guys, and I think I actually made him make a tough check on one guy on one of the stone scribes. Um. Obviously, I'm boosting, trying to do something, and he ain't doing nothing. Um, all right. Um, stones just kind of shift, or the watcher just shifts. I mean, sorry. Uh, watcher shifts, just kind of getting it to where he can kind of mess with the flag and get to the fat flag next turn, depending on what he does. Um, the uh, druid stone ward just kind of shift over. Or basically, if there's anyone that goes for the flag, they can kind of just shoot them to pieces. They also use uh, Zephyr, which is an extra 3 inch movement. So, effectively, they get moved 9 inches. Um, then the Wilder just basically runs just to get further up the field to where, if I need her later on to get rid of Fury, she's up there and she can help out. Balder kind of just shimmies. Behind his three heavies, uh, he goes ahead and casts um, Rapid Growth and uh, Stone Skin. Stone Skin on Megalith. If you don't know what Stone Skin is, basically it gives him plus two strength, plus two armor, but he's at minus one speed and defense. Also, Rapid Growth, it's a four inch AoE and it is a forest that I get placed in my control area. Um, then the Sentry Stone activates, it gets a Fury Point for activating. Um, the Mannequin just kind of shift forward, and the Sentry Stone just sits there. Uh, the Stones shift to where basically they have basically my entire bow group in it, and that's my turn. Alright, my turn two. Got through turn one, relatively unscathed. Um, upkeep, uh, I'm going to upkeep Fortune, but I'm letting Banishing Ward go, because I don't really feel he's going to be targeting my units. With spells um, he's left one world watcher out on the edge that uh, he did not get stone skin up on so my plan is to throw six pal 14s at it at dice minus three and take it off the table just because they're annoying and uh, that's that's what these guys are attempting to do um, to show how good a player I am the first thing I do is I come up here and uh, after a little bit of damage on the first roll, I'm pretty sure the second roll, I spike some snake eyes. There they go. Yeah, and that, uh, of course, I immediately start to deviate because, you know, I've been practicing to play a little faster. Forgetting I have fortune on this unit, and I could have rerolled that attack. And, you know, since I leave at the end of the time where these six rune shapers fail to kill this guy, it might have been important. Um, so, advance on the other side. Um, basically, two things I'm doing here. Uh, one, I'm going to attempt to take out the thing that makes the little twigs. It annoys me. Um, not a lot of great targets here, especially because drifts aren't going to work against uh, Balder. Um, 
but I'm also getting guys into the middle of the zone, and I'm kind of setting the line of engagement. Um, what I want to do with these guys right here is make it so that he can't get past that unit of rune shapers, and then my beasts are going to get to attack whatever comes after them. Um, really, the, the damage rolls they're doing at this time on their rock hammers is pretty inconsequential. I think I'd get a little bit of damage on one or two. Um, one of the nice things about the uh, rune shapers is they have Pathfinder, um, and that'll come into play in just a little bit. The wall in the middle of the table, I don't know if you can see it next to the forest that he's created. Actually, I'm moving Mulg up to it now. The uh, I felt that was a pretty important piece, and I felt the first army to get to that spot was going to be in, have a big advantage. Um, so right now I'm making big use of the Earthborn and his Animus on Mulg. Um, so I'm going to keep my beast at arm 23. Um, and allows me to pretty much march my entire army up behind them. The, the unit of rune shapers that are uh, going to activate here in a second. These these guys. Original plan, they were going to stay behind the wall, be a second wave. But I, at this point, I think I'm a little tilted that the I missed and forgot to reroll with my banishing or with my fortune spell. So this is a valiant effort to attempt to take that world water off the table. Not going to happen. I think I'll leave it at like four boxes. And you know, when you're playing, uh, leaving any construct alive is just annoying. So they finish. I'm gonna now move. Some debate's going on at this point. Okay, yeah, I was trying to figure out where to put the Mauler. Mauler comes up. Um, I'm actually gonna be able to use uh, Genasia to put a wall closer to my Rune Shapers. Uh, mostly just to provide a little bit of cover. They've outrun where she could put a good wall, but she's still covered. Um, Thought I'd just ninja slap his twigs down with my measuring tape there. Um, a couple more inconsequential rock hammers being thrown, and then I move up my axer, stay behind the wall. I'm going to move up Doomy, and Doomy, <clears throat> after the Creel Stone goes. Order activation is a big thing. Again, if Creel Stone goes first, then I can use Doom Shaper to reload the Creel Stone afterwards. So, it's, you know, lessons learned. Uh, now I'm going to make sure I get the Earthborn's Animus up on the Mauler. Pretty much trying to put Armor 23 everywhere. I'm holding my feet right now because I don't feel like he's going to be able to get anything on my War Beasts. And I was right and wrong about that, but you'll see that in the next turn. Alright, Circle Turn 2. Alright, so he ends up sh uh, shooting me with a couple of the rune shapers. Ends up doing like a couple points here and there, except for the watcher at the very top of the screen. He ends up knocking out some stuff on him. Uh, I let both spells drop, both uh, rapid growth and um, stone skin. Then also the stones start healing the watcher just to make sure he's fully functional. Um, I end up moving over the druid stone wards so they can then shoot the rune shapers. Uh, they're using concentrated fire, and if you don't know what that is, basically with this unit, they have range 10, pow 12, uh, range attacks, and for every time they hit, they get an increase to their pow. So, obviously, after a while, it actually hurts a lot. So, generally the last one will kill something, but unfortunately, my unlucky dice rolls ends up, you know, kind of screwing the pooch for me. Um, I kind of do the same thing with second unit. Second unit shifts up a little bit. Uh, they also do concentrated fire. Um, they do a little bit better than the other group, but they still kind of suck at dice rolls. And, yeah. I kept rolling the hit. I was hitting amazingly. It was just those damage rolls. Just couldn't do it. I don't know what it was. I think I am finally killing uh, one entire unit with them. Then the Watcher ends up activating. Uh, Watcher is just sitting still and just shooting at him. He ends up hitting and I'm boosting damage. And I think I forced a tough check and he is good. Alright, so this turn I kind of screwed up. Because for some reason I thought I could kill um, Molg with just a regular uh, Guardian with Stone Skin. Then also I added, um, what is it called, uh, stone form to the Watcher. Uh, I am shifting over one of the Guardians for some reason thinking that 
I can do something to Moog. It was a really terrible idea. I shouldn't have done it. But I guess I kind of had to. Uh, so, I'm pretty sure I should have gone over uh, after the Earthborn first. Because I think he would have been a little bit easier to kill. Uh, Megalith ends up shifting over a little bit, putting uh, Stone Skin on the one Guardian. And also kind of playing defense so Baldur can kind of move forward a little bit. Um, so, I go ahead and activate the Guardian. He's swinging his little heart out. He's only doing a couple points here and there, unfortunately. It's dice minus one, but even with that, even with the six attacks that he gets, he did nowhere near enough damage to really hurt Mog. He basically just tickled him. He's like, hee 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 hee, and Mog just laughed at him. So we'll see how this uh, ends out next turn with uh, Mog retaliating against me. All right, that's done. Uh, the pillow fight is done. Um, the Watcher goes ahead and activates. He's going to shoot. Standstill shoot. He ends up hitting. Boosting damage. Um, I do a couple points to him. Not much. Then he does one for uh, stone form. Just to make sure that he doesn't get knocked down and everything else. Um, shifting stone. Or century stone I believe. Uh, sorry. Century stone activates. He actually... Uh, uses his phase jump and then uses devour devour magic I believe it's called um, and what that does is I get to take a fury point from every enemy war beast within six inches and put it on myself up to five fury points so it's actually kinda good when there's a lot of enemy war beasts nearby um, so you can kinda like fuel them up um, I am spraying some rune shapers with the um, Mannequin. I don't think I actually end up doing anything. I like boost um, to hits and whatnot, and try to hit and damage. I don't really do much. He's just, he's just another pow ten. I am screwing up on the placement on this. Um, I should have actually shimmied him over to where he was actually engaging one of the other rune shapers. It was my fault, but oh well. And the fury point. The reason it was taken away is because I. Uh, Almost spent a fury point for him to charge, but with Balder, all constructs actually charge for free. Uh, Balder actually moves forward, and as a to salvage this turn, I kind of uh, pop feet to kind of help me and defend myself. I um, put up solid ground. And cast the uh, Watcher's Animus. I can't be knocked down. So basically if the Rune Shapers just try to come over. Get rid of solid ground. Um, with Purification. Uh, he can't knock me down. Then also I throw out a Forest. And that is my turn. My turn three. Balder's defeated, so there's no Pathfinder for my squad, and uh, he's come in and teleported in to hit Mog. Um, I think he did 14 damage to arm, at him at armor 23. Uh, Mog's knocked down, so I'm going to shake that off in the beginning here. I wound up having to activate uh, Doomy first because I want to get uh, uh, the Mauler's Animus Rage on as many beasts as I can. I also want to purify. Um, I felt it was important to get rid of strength of the earth. Uh, the offshoot of all this is it's going to wind up leaving me at about uh, one fury. And I don't think that hordes players in general will tell you that's a very safe amount to camp. So I'm aware of Balder and his popping out of forests. And I haven't been able to take the uh, thing off the table that makes forests. So it's, it's a little touch and go. You'll see as I play this turn, I'm going to put a lot of stuff in front of Doomy as possible. Um, first thing that's going to happen, though, is Mole's going to start beating on his uh, little buddy there that teleported in to say hi. Um, so at some point, these beatings are going to commence. Let's go here. Because if you haven't beat down something with Mole, then you're not having any fun as a troll player. So here we go. I believe um, 
at this point in time, Mulg is going to be hitting him at pal 22. So, I actually think it takes me... It took one to shake the knockdown. Oh, no. I forfeited his movement to stand up. So, we didn't shake anything. So, he just stood up and started swinging. But, as you'll see, it's, I'm at... I've used both my initials. I've bought two attacks, bought three attacks. He's still around. Um... Buying a fourth attack right now, and that takes him off the table. One to spare. So I feel pretty good. Just leave him all in that spot. He's behind the wall. The feet will be gone next turn, and uh, he'll come walking out if need be. These Rune Shapers' job, they have one job right now. That's to uh, get out of the way of the Mauler. So they're going to come up. I'm still trying to take that fire off the table. What's that thing? Hold on a second. The Sentinel Stone. If I can get rid of that thing, I'm going to feel pretty good because I don't know why. I don't want any force popping up on my side of the table. I believe I hit it. I believe I do no damage. Um, the rest of the guys don't have much great targets, so we start taking shots at things they can't really hurt. The Rune Shapers did not exactly shine in this matchup. Um, but, they, you know, they're five hit points. Medium base, tough. They get in the way real well. So... They they did a couple bits of damage here and there. Right now I'm missing a guy that I shouldn't miss in DVA on to my own guys. I actually believe I do some damage here. So yeah, there you go. They hurt themselves pretty well. Alright, so here comes the Mauler. He's uh, going to be able to actually get to the. Uh, there we go. Right up in them base to base. Spend one for charge. Mauler has chain attack, grab, and smash. Um, and we got into the whole debate here of, you know, I've hit with both my initials. I now I'm given a chain attack, grab and smash. Can't throw them, can't knock them down, but we decided, you know, headbutt still does damage. So we use that for another attack. Mahler's attacking him at power strength 19s. And he actually takes him off the table faster than Mulg did at power 22. Alright, so I've taken his two heavy hitters off the table. He still has Megalith. I'm not going to be able to get to Megalith this turn because my Earthborn is kind of tucked behind that middle wall. And under this feet, he's not going to have enough speed to get out and get around to him uh, with no reach. However, he's uh, you know going to be able to change and put his Animus up on Mulg, so he still feel good about that. These are some inconsequential attacks. I've basically taken his heavies off the board. Megalus in supreme danger. He's not going to be able to kill any of my guys. Um, at this point, I'm starting to plan, okay, the only way I'm going to lose this is to get assassinated. Um, and I realize at this point where I've put, you know, Doomy is not the world's greatest spot. Uh, he has no real protection. Um, he's got uh, only one Fury. Um, and, you know, I've, I've played games before where little... Balder comes popping out of the most random places. So, at this point, the Creel Stone's jobs are basically just to clutter up all the space in between Doomy and his team, uh, Balder's team, basically. Um, and you're going to see Janasia pull some crazy ninja move here where she's going to come to the back and actually put a wall behind uh, my caster just in case he tries to make a forest on that side of the table. So, at this point, I'm fairly certain that the the way for me to lose this game is to get assassinated. I popped my feet earlier on, so we'll see what happens. Alright, circle turn three. Alright, so to recap, Doom Shaper has just popped his feet. If you don't know what that does, uh, for every time I spend a Fury Point on either my Warbeast or my Warcaster, I take D6 points of damage. Um, so this turn, I feel like I'm doomed if I go for it. I'm doomed if I don't. So I'm just going to go 
page five, play like you got a pair, just go straight in and try to kill him. Um, Wilder ends up just running. Uh, the Sentry Stone activates, it uses Devouring Magic. It ends up taking a Fury Point from Molg, the Earthborn, the Mauler, and the Axer. The two mannequins that are left, uh, one goes over and high fives Balder and decides to turn himself into a forest, kind of protecting Balder a little bit. Um, also giving him an advantage to where he can forest walk if uh, it's available. Uh, the other mannequin decides to go ahead and spray down the line of trolls. This is actually very awesome, and he was on fire when he was rolling these. I don't understand why I can be rolling this the other half of the game. Um, for some reason, he had like some kind of troll hate or something. He's like, oh, you trolls, grrr. Um, we, he ends up killing, I think, uh, two stone scribes and actually clears out the two guys I need to, to where I can actually have line of sight to the guy that's actually right in front of Doom Shaper. Um, I am blocking my own lane to get to that guy. Um, so I, the Shifting Stone UA actually has to shoot the Wilder in the back with a rock hammer to try to get rid of them. Uh, I end up hitting and I actually end up killing both the Wilder and the Mannequin. I was actually really hoping I wasn't going to kill the Mannequin. But, you know, it happens. Um, the Watcher goes ahead and moves forward and tries to shoot the guy right next to Doom Shaper. We're double checking to make sure he does actually have line of sight. He ends up having line of sight. Um, if you don't know about the Watcher's range attack, basically the Watcher's range attack is range 10, POW 12, and also has a rule called Fertilizer. Fertilizer is really nice, especially with Balder, because it lets him use Forest Walk. Because Fertilizer, basically, anytime it kills a model, that model turns into a 3-inch Forest template. So, it is actually very useful for Balder, because it allows him to have a lot of movement shenanigans. Um, Megalith ends up walking forward and putting a Stone Skin on uh, Balder. And now it is actually Balder's turn. Um, he ends up just basically forced walking over there and ends up just trying to go for it. He ends up just swinging for the sky, trying to hope that he does enough damage. Um, I hit uh, actually on the very first attack, which is actually really nice because Balder actually has a rule with his weapon which is a uh, weight of stone. It's minus three speed and minus three defense. So not only do I have that going for me, I also have stone skin, which increases my pow. So it's actually a really good combo. Um, ends up to where I'm at dice minus one. And between me hitting him and him hitting me back, we're both basically doing equal damage to each other. Um, and unfortunately, because the way Doom Shaper is feet is worded, I take the damage before I can actually roll out the attack. Which kind of sucks, but on the other hand, you know, it's my fault for actually going for the assassination on a sweet turn. Probably not the best choice. Um, but it ends up rolling out to where I end up being one point shy of making him make a tough check. And I couldn't spend my one last fury point because I only had one health box left. He ended up rolling just well enough to leave me with one point, and I rolled just terrible enough to leave him with one point. Um, and basically that's when I called it, because me sitting there with one point and a fury point, I'm not going to last long. Um, it was actually a really amazing game. Um, hats off to the troll player.